What's up, everybody? We're back at it again live with Brandon Blatney Extra. I'm here at Calvary Day School for the Triad Blue Chip Fall League Championship game, and it's going down. We got Davy County versus RJ Reynolds, two of the proudest programs around the Triad, and they're ready to battle it out. Both schools feature two D1 recruits. Uh, for R.J. Reynolds, you got Mr. Goodlow, the USC Upstate recruit, combo guard, leading them tough both ways in the end, two-way guard. On the other side, you got, for Davie County, Owen McCormick, 6'8", stretch, 4'4", forward. Um, he's, he's a new age forward, guys. He can really open the floor up for these slashers, create space. And it should be a, a heck of a battle. Both these teams are really scrappy. They play hard on both ends. They're well coached. They play together. And uh, they're not letting anything go by easy. So we're going to see who takes it here. Yeah, I got my guy, Coach Bishop, here. Thanks for having Take me. Take a breath, Coach. It, it, it's a wrap. Yes. The championship of the Triad Fall League has concluded. Mm -hmm. um, RJR crowned the tra champs. Yep. And... Um, if I'm not mistaken, was it two seasons in a row that uh, the Triad missed out on the championship? So this is kind of history for them, right? We, we hadn't brought a championship back to the Triad in a while from the Guilford team. Yes, um, from this side of the Triad, no. Guilford, Eastern Guilford dominated the last two years. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely dominated. Um, they lost their very first game two years ago to um, a 27-3 West Forsyth team, yeah. who was an Elite 8 team, 4A, by five points, and they hadn't lost since. So everybody was um, chomping at the bit when they realized Eastern Guilford was not a part <laughs> of the fall league this year. They haven't experienced a lot of losing. No, so no, no. So I know that group of guys from Eastern Guilford dominated preseason and regular season mm -hmm. um, for the last two years. So um, so this year we had a new champ. So we had RJR a new champ. was very happy to capitalize yes. on Jalen Austin being gone. Yes. So um, talk, we're, talk about uh, RJR a little bit. Give us a breakdown. Um, we, we saw – a very scrappy bunch. Yes. Well, I actually, um, I said it from from the first um, the first week. You know, of course, being the, the director of the league and we having skeptics and everyone else saying, "Well, I guess you already picked RGR." I really can't come out and say stuff, but I know talent when I see it. I play basketball on every level, from 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 the middle school level to the professional level. And when you see a group who has talent and a group who can work hard, just like the Easton Guilford two years ago. And I was like, this Easton Guilford team's going to be good. Yeah. Um, you know, the Mount Airy teams, yeah. this oh. Mount Airy team's going to be good. Yeah. Um, then you just know. And yeah. RGR, yes, RGR goes in that bucket. Um, I saw them the first week, and they came out, and they played first half so hard over eight weeks that there were weeks that they got bored. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and especially against a competition where they say, okay, we're going to play hard. And then they say, all right, we can – you can't handle our A game, so we're going to play our C game. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, but, but, and they did. They did against Davy two weeks ago. Okay. So, so being in a championship game against Davy again mm -hmm. made them play a full game. Like a they said, Yes. They said, we're going to give you our A game for 40 minutes, and then we're going to see what you can do with that. So, um, the RGA team is very good. So top to bottom, they have a leader, Mr. Goodlow. They have um, a senior right behind him. Um, his, his kind of his Robin. I don't want to say it's Robin, but it's 1A. Definitely um, that, that, yes, that, and that Devin, side that sidekick. And you need that. And, and, and someday they're going to switch. Someday Mr. ain't going to got it going, and he got to be Robin. And, he, you know, and the good thing about him, he's willing to be Robin. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Kaden show up today. I know he's been playing football. Yeah. He showed up today, and um, he played a few games during the season. And A lot of these guards really seem like they control the tempo. The yes. first half, it was a lot faster. Um, if you've seen Reynolds in the past, mm -hmm. they, they, they're, they run and gun. But yes. this, this year we saw yes. those guys slow down and really yes. control the and tempo. This, this team can play in the full court and in the half court. And, and I think that's a difference with this Reynolds team, um, where Reynolds team three years ago with Akia Pruitts mm -hmm. and, and, you know, um, that team also could have done that. That team had a size. That team has a, okay, we gonna, we're so athletic, we can run you out of the gym, literally. Or if we're going to slow it down, we're going to X and O's. You know, the Tim Henry is going to bang inside. Um, the Chris Freeman can knock down a shot. Exactly. The Akia Pruitt, and that's what this team um, kind of is similar to that. And I'm sure they have football players who, we, who we're not, haven't been exposed to as yet. What can we expect from Devin Ingram? I know a lot of the staff was really high on him. We didn't get to see a lot of him last year yes. on a team that was very talented, yes. a conference championship team, mm -hmm. uh, we add. 
Um, what can we see from this uh, the senior X factor that maybe right. what he can bring to Reynolds this season? Um, first and foremost, I hope some a college pick up Devin. I mean, Devin Devin is a player who can score, like he's a scorer. Okay. He's um he can shoot a three, he can shoot the mid range, he can shoot a step back, he can go left, he can go right, and he's explosive enough to finish mm -hmm. on both sides. No, he's not six five, six six, six seven, six eight. Um, but again. It's 5v5, and you got to guard him, there's, and there's fouls. Exactly. So, so Devin came out, and this he knows this is his senior year. But again, again, his, his Mr. Goodlow, his Caden, his teammates know this is his senior year and his ability, and they respect that. And that helps him a lot. Um, I think the only thing that Devin might have to work on is his, um, his home run passes. You don't have to go for the home run passes. Yeah. And if you see the opposite guard who played against him today, Troy, he does not go for the home run passes. Exactly. He misses steady. Mm -hmm. So Devin has everything that Troy has and a little bit more because he can score. And, and so Devin has really stepped out of the shadow, so to say, of his team. Um, but he's still a part of his team. He's just an easygoing guy. He loves exactly. it. He loves to compete. Okay. Um, and so this year, I'll, I'm expecting to see a lot, a lot of very good things from him this year. I won't be surprised if he can average 12 to 14 points per game. Um, or more in Coach Martin's system. Another breakout senior. It seems like um, the, the the jerseys and the faces change. But yes. The talent and the win stay the same. Yes, and I'm glad he's a senior. Not mm -hmm. to cut you off, I'm glad Devin is a senior because yeah. I want the guys to realize, those who watch this video, that you don't have to be the superstar as a freshman, as a sophomore, as a junior. You can you can be a part of a great team, mm -hmm. but your senior year is when you can step up because now coaches need your senior leadership in the locker room. Yeah. Coaches need your, your senior um, maturity when the game is close. So Devin just shows you that, hey, I can do everything on my varsity team, and when it's my time, I can have my time. Exactly. And, and you don't break team chemistry as a freshman, a sophomore, a junior, because you think, I need to get recruited now. Mm -hmm. And Devin has shown that. Just so. waiting his time. Just waiting his, waiting time. his time. And it's his time. It is his time. Now, looking ahead a little bit, um, we saw Davey, um, Owen McCormick, Michael Walt, and two standout players as well. Um, your league has been packed with talent this year. Um, tell us about some of these standouts, these other standouts. We spoke on those two yep. that you've seen that have really kind of taken that next step and maybe that you expect to mm -hmm. really do some things this season, make some noise. So standout-wise, um, definitely, as I said, we, we, we know, if I can just go down the list of teams, so select team, select team is a select team. So we had a many standouts. Um, I think one person who we won't get to see a lot going to Tribe Baptist is Grady, Grady Boris. Yeah. He is, um, I like him. Yeah. He can put it on the floor. He goes and get rebounds. He shoots the threes. He does an awesome job. Um, Landon Sutton, Landon Sutton, again, for me, is a, um, a low to mid-major Division One player. He can do that. He can play at that level. Combo guard. Combo guard, if you want him to bring it down. Um, and, of course, you know, the Caleb. You know, we have Caleb on a select team. We spoke about Reynolds already. Davey, I think one player that is a little bit underrated is their point guard, Troy. He's um, moving the basketball. He's moving the basketball. Um, he has shooters with him, so he's able to get the shooters the ball where they need to get it. Um, for Davey and Reagan. Reagan, I, I, I'm sorry that I, I forgot the name, but yeah, Reagan, Reagan has... Um, a player who players who does what they're supposed to do they shoot the mid-range very well and um, I call Reagan a varsity JV team meaning they do not have a uh, one significant person they're gonna go to mm -hmm. and that makes them dangerous yeah they're a varsity JV team where we say hey I have about six guys who can rock and roll and we're gonna rock and roll until the buzzer goes off at the end of the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And my select team played them today, and I told the guys today, look, if you don't box out, if you don't sit disciplined, these guys are going to back door cut you. Mm -hmm. These guys are going to shoot the jump shot. So Reagan has a very good bunch that coaches need to watch. You don't know who's nice. There's, and there's, no, and there's one player, sorry, I forgot his name, that he shoots, he shoots very well. He's always composed. He plays a point for them sometimes. Love him, love him. And I'll be at a lot of Reagan games just because of that. Um... So we have, you know, Forsyth Country Day. I think Forsyth Country Day is still coming together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they have Cole who, who helped lead that team. Coleman, who used to be at Davie, now, you know, he's at Country Day. Um, he does a good job with that. But again, 
for side country that has a group of guys that once they become one, mm -hmm. they'll be very good. Um, Southern Guilford, Mataj is, um, he is the Devin Ingram for Southern Guilford. Okay. He, um, he shoots a three well, he gets to the hole, He's, you know, he's, he was composed today. Of course, we know Julius and Tyler. Yeah, the, the, they are the Mr. Goodloes of that team. They are the guys who, who are going to give you your 40 to 50 points a game. Oh, yeah. They're that good. I saw Julius today, and I was very, very impressed with his demeanor, mm -hmm. his body language. Shot didn't go in. Um, ref didn't give me a call. All right, next play, next play. And I think his, his leadership is going to be very, 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 very um, key for Coach Fancourt at Southern Guilford. Um, so that team has has a group of players that do very well, um, and I'm gonna journey down to Southern Guild for the <laughs> watch those guys. Where I am because I want to. I haven't seen. I haven't had since I've been coaching at Western Side for the last three. I haven't had a chance to go to an Eastern Guildford game, uh -huh. a Southern Guildford game, a Western Alamance, Eastern. I haven't had a chance to do those things. So I want to do that this year definitely. Um, so we had a very good stack team from top to bottom, and then your West Side. West Side has Raymond Mitchell. Who's um who's coming up? Jay Jay Mitchell as oh, yeah. well. Yeah. Um who who is who is athletic? Heck of He's a big. defender. Heck of a defender. I I just told him if you get a little bit more arch on your shot and that shot can go in a little bit more per game, you're gonna be. He's going to be a very, very good player. Need those 3 and D guys. Need those 3 and D guys. Of course, Ron is. He can shoot that shot very well. Um, and then they had they had Peyton in a big, you know, a big body inside. So West Side will be right there looking at to try to compete for the CPC. So those are the teams that we had in that varsity division, and um, I think I think they competed very well. And finally, Calvary, right where we at? The, Cal the host, the host. Calvary, I think Calvary is going to make some noise this year. Agreed. Calvary is going to make some noise this year. Um, Jackson Gammons, last year, quick story, last game, Jackson had the worst game I seen him play. And there was a the last game of the day, and I was cleaning up. And before I got halfway through cleaning up, he had the gun up on the hoop, shooting working out already oh, right after the game. game and I say that's the play I can lose with mm -hmm. I, because he know he accepts he didn't blame anyone else I had a bad game and there's something I need to do to have a good game next time and he came out today sure. torching shooting and he said he said coach I still didn't shoot as well as I feel like I need to shoot and he did awesome so Calvary um Javon Floyd um, play the full five for them. He's going to be key. He's, um, of course, Cliff is, is, a, is a sidekick to, 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 to Jackson. Oh, yeah. um, but I think um, Frederick, Fred, um, he is going to be long, lanky, three, hits the three, gets to the hoop, very athletic, wiry player. So I'm, Calvary's going to be good this year. Calvary's going to be good. Well, you heard that. There's just a lot of uh, action happening here in the Triad League. Yes. Great chance to really get a preview, a lock on a lot of teams, a lot of area talent. Before the season starts, Before the, yeah. um, they're prepping. Coach Bishop, you do a great job, man. Bring these guys in Thank as you. an organizer. A lot of people don't really see what goes into it behind the scenes. Yeah, a lot of work. Preparation. I know it's a lot of work for you. Um, before we let you go, mm -hmm. definitely just let them know where they can find all the information. Yeah. And if you want to be a part of um, try at blue chip and it's yeah. coming up you know what do we need to do so try blue chip try blue chip um and twitter we also have um blue chip basketball academy on instagram and um we always have our calendar on our website which is blue chip basketball um i know coming up the next thing we have coming up would be our triad high school all-star game okay which is you know huge i'm, I'm, I'm already excited about it i'm challenge. always excited about it um and that would be the 22nd and 23rd of March. And um, we also will have our triad first 48 for girls and boys. Okay. And that would primarily um, be for our sophomores, rising sophomores and our rising juniors. And our senior class would have a chance, our senior class who's going out, we have a chance to have, we're gonna have an um, unsigned senior game. Okay. To where coaches can come in. Great event for coaches. Yes, watch that game. Say, hey, I've been following this player, but I like to see him play against other seniors. See how he matches up so, um, for both men's and women's. And those um, dates are going to be announced. It'll be right after the season in March, before the AAU season, and people kind of start getting dispersed for AAU. Um, but all that information can be found on Tribe Blue Chip on Twitter, 
bluechipbasketballacademy.com, which is our website. We have our calendar there, and um, check us out. And that's a wrap here for us at the Triad Fall League. Another successful year. Uh, RJ Reynolds were crowned champions, well deserved, and continue to follow up on coverage so you know what's going on with all the latest going on in the triad. I'm Brandon Blakeney. This was live with Brandon Blakeney Extra, signing off. Thank <laughs> you.